Okay, I'm going to put a little video together here, um, just showing a pretty simple procedure to set up a platinum flask. Uh, we use the Romanoff products with the J formula and um, just basically follow their system. Uh, this is the paper they sell that uh, replaces the flask base, it's the uh, absorbent paper. Um, and then they sell these mushroom pieces and like I think they're almost a dollar a piece. Um, so what I ended up doing, let me see that. What I ended up doing is um, I just modeled something in uh, Rhino, uh, milled them out, polished them up nice, cast them in silver, polished them up nice, and then just made a mold of them. Uh, so basically, I made a cone and a mushroom. Uh, just been experimenting with what kind of pours better. Uh, I know the Flask base that Endotherm sends comes with a cone, so that's why I made a cone. But when they sell them, they're mushrooms, but you kind of interchange them. It's not real important. But I think the cone works a little better as far as pouring and turbulence when you pour the metal. Um, so basically, we just inject them as we need them. Um, and that's used to put to, as the um, becomes your sprue base. So all you have to do is just adhere this base to the um, wicking paper. Um, you know, I've thought about making these little wax rings that you can just lay on there and melt. Um, there's no real super quick way to get around this step. Um, just adhere it to the paper using some wax, a little melting temperature wax. definitely want to make sure that this area is sealed. Um, you don't want the investment flowing out in the end step. It is pretty thick when you pour it, so it's not a huge deal, but you just want to make sure you're sealing all the way around. Um, if you don't want to spend the money on the paper, um, I know another guy locally that uses just cardboard. It'll work just as good. It's basically to take away the um, the acid, or I guess the water in the acid, to, in the in the investment itself. Um, you want to be able to uh, wick out as much of the liquid as possible, and from what I understand, as quickly as possible. So that's. All you got to do there, you just have a cone on the base. Um, I use a pretty standard um, sprue for the platinum, depending on how heavy the ring is, obviously. They, they recommend that you go kind of twice as thick as you would. Let's sit here and muff this up while I'm trying to get my face out of the picture. They often recommend that you go about twice as thick as you normally would with gold. Um, for a typical ring, we haven't seen a huge need to, uh, to do that. This will typically cast this fine. Fairly short sprue you definitely want to put on. Um, I would take a little more time to neaten this up and have a nice flow. It's all about, obviously, the metal flow. So the idea is to create as little turbulence as possible. Okay, the next step is basically to just simply take the flask, center it over your base, and you kind of do the same thing all the way around. 
Um, found a great use for those wax wires that every jeweler probably has and probably never uses. Um, all in all, this whole process, it, it usually takes about 45 minutes from beginning to end. Um, cut out and splice and put this together so you don't have to sit here and watch paint dry, but um, you just got to go around the whole thing. Once again, just making sure it's sealed. Um, I haven't really found a quick way to do this. Uh, I was going to make like a, a mold the right size and just kind of lay it on there and melt it, but as you melt it, it kind of lifts up and I tried to just lay them on there and flow, but there's no real quick way to do this that I've found. Uh, then just I know with some of the faster drying investments like the um, Taladium Galaxy, this becomes a non-issue at all because you can use a rubber base that dries so quickly. not the issue with uh, acid binder. Something we plan on trying to use a little more later this year. But we're waiting on a um, vacuum investment mixer. Alright, so you get the idea, just go all the way around. That's basically all we do to prep a platinum casting. Um, it would be sealed all the way around. Um, I'll give the brief steps of uh, putting the investment together as well. It's basically we just totally follow the instructions, measure it out very carefully. Uh, the one tricky part, I think the first mistake we did is when the acid binder comes, you have to mix it. You have to dilute it down, um, and we hadn't done that. We had used the binder right out of the bottle, and it obviously didn't work very well. Um, but you have to mix the binder down just following the instructions. It's a bit of a pain that it doesn't come at the right ratio, but just take the time to do a gallon at a time, and it'll, it'll get you through a um, fairly many amount of um, castings. Um, let me think what else. It was pretty much it. The, just following the instructions on the investment, I, I think, is key. We weigh it out. We measure it. We do exactly what it says. Let it dry. Um, and I'll, I'll kind of put some snippets of that process as well. Alright, that's it. Okay, I have a flask here that's uh, ready to go. It's got the wax base all the way around it. Um, pieces are in there and then we take the paper, it's pretty simple. We just cut it, put it in there. Uh, we figure if it's better to wick away as much of the liquid as possible, we started doubling it up. So we actually use two pieces now. Um, we've been getting good results with it. No, doesn't seem to be any problems. Leave a little bit. You can see that it's a little lower than the, the base. This keeps the flask adhered to the um, investment. Although even if the flask would fall off, it's really not a problem. But we've never had that happen. Um, that's the basic preparation uh, for cast and platinum. Um, and then it's just follow the instructions on the uh, as they come with the investment itself. Uh, we just follow them to a T, um, and we've been getting great results with uh, both the uh, Romanoff's um, J formula and the uh, Endotherm 20B.